up everybody, it's the Bowtie Boss, I'm back again for Fight Combat Sports News and, and uh, look, I'm a very excited, a very fucking gleeful Bowtie Boss right now. Uh, man, I got what I asked for. As Eris Landy Lada got what he asked for. The entire boxing public right now is getting what they asked for. And that is to see exactly where Canelo Alvarez fits into the world, man. Uh, we already know that he's outclassed by Floyd Mayweather. Who isn't, right? Floyd's on a, on a totally different level than anybody else. And the one dude that we always come back to with Canelo Alvarez at 154 is none other than Landy Lara. Um, damn, man. I, when, when, when they said he was fighting Ishe Smith, um, I just wasn't happy about it. I, I know nobody was. Who wants to see Eris Landy Lara and, and Ishe Smith, man? Uh, Lara is, is a supreme master boxer. He's not an exciting fighter to watch unless he's in there with somebody who's going to do... Uh, something, right? He say Smith is not a do something kind of guy. He, he'd rather sit in there for 12 rounds and throw, you know, 215 total punches and, and hope to skate by. Uh, Canelo Alvarez is not Ishe Smith. <laughs> Man, this is this is such a uh, such an exciting fight for me. And um, you know, three four years ago, I would say this is going to be. A, uh, I I wouldn't even see this as competitive. I would say uh, Landy Lara is going to win easily. Um, I'm still edging towards Lara at this point. Uh, but, you know, each of their last two wins are against the exact same people. While, uh, you know, Alvarez has fought, you know, uh, Floyd in the middle of Trout and, and Angulo. Um, his last two wins are Trout and Angulo. Uh, vice versa for, for uh, Lara, right? He beat Angulo, Angulo and then he beat Trout. And you look at how both of these guys beat him, you could say, man, uh, you know, Canelo beat uh, Angulo much easier than... than uh, uh, Lara did. And then on the flip side, you could say that uh, Lara beat Trout so much easier than, than this guy did. So yeah, I, I really don't think you could look at past past experience to see who's going to win in this one. Um, super competitive fight and I think it's really going to give us that, that absolute test of who Canelo Alvarez is as a fighter now as a future champion and I absolutely love, I love what Golden Boy is doing with him. You know, he came off that, that Mayweather loss and they could have gone back to, to easy touching this guy all the way through. I was absolutely wrong with my prediction of him and, and Angulo. I thought Angulo was going to do more in that fight. Uh, but then again, I don't know if Angulo didn't do more because of Canelo, right? Did, did he not throw his body shots with intent because he was scared of what was going to come back his way? Uh, so, you know, real quick, man, um, I, I, this, like, I, I'm going to be glued to my seat. Uh, so for, for Alvarez to win this fight... You know, his keys to victory really are, are jab, 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 jab. And when you're done jabbing, jab some more. When you feel like your arm's going to die, keep on jabbing. Uh, you say, hey, hey, bow tie, why are you, why you saying jab, you know, even though Lada's a lefty? You should be throwing a straight right. Well, here's the reason why, man. Uh, 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 Canelo Alvarez has what, I, what I'll consider dinosaur arms at that weight, right? He's got, those, he's got pretty short arms um, at, at 154 and at his height. And a lead right... I think that a, a guy who's as smart and as good as boxer as Lada is going to pick that up too easily and counter it too easily. Um, so, you know, if he gets that jab going, what he's going to do is force Lada to move first. Uh, uh, Landy Lada counters real well when um, you let him stay at that range. But if El Alvarez makes him move first, makes him pick up his feet and move elsewhere, his counters are not going to be nearly as strong. Um, Next, what, what I want to see him do is, is something that I don't have to tell him to do, that nobody has to tell him to do, is use that vicious, vicious body attack. Uh, Alvarez throws body punches better than probably anybody in boxing right now uh, in combination, right? He throws hard in combination, then he, he takes that combination right downstairs and right back upstairs. He's going to need to do a lot of body work and just destroy those legs of, of Lada, destroy his ability to move in and out. Uh, and, then, and then last, man... And, and I've had some people say, you know, his defense isn't based on this kind of stuff, so why should he do it? But I think everybody should do it, and Alvarez is a, a perfect example of it. Um, when he's done throwing five and six punches, he absolutely needs to pick up his feet and move elsewhere. He can't just sit inside and try to do those dips and slides. Um, you know, Lada's too, too smart, he's too quick, and he's going to pick up on that. Now, again, I thought Alvarez was going to have that same problem with Angulo, and Angulo was going to bang his body. Angulo just didn't throw the punches needed. Had he thrown the punches, he would have landed them, because Alvarez is, is he's right in front of you. Now, some guys get caught up trying to hit headshots right in there, and, and uh, you know, they miss because he's, he's ducking and he's diving. But 
he's got to pick up his feet and he's got to leave when he burns that energy. As muscular as he is, when he throws those six punches as hard as he throws them, he's dead tired. That leads to his stamina problems. I guarantee you that's why he has stamina problems because he throws too many hard punches in a row, but he doesn't leave. If he leaves, he's not going to have anything to worry about and he skates through this bout. Uh, now, on the flip side for Landy Lada to win, you know, his keys to victory is be first, man. Uh, you, you hear me say it a thousand times, if you're one of my fighters, you know, I scream it at you, I slap it into your face, I probably, you know, in your locker, I'm going to put little notes that say, always be first. You know, man, even if you're a counter puncher, be first. Make the first move, even if that first move is a feint, he's got to be first. Uh, as a counter puncher, what happens when you're first is you force the other guy to do things before he's ready. If you wait on an offensive minded fighter, uh, the offensive minded fighter is going to beat you, even if you're a counter puncher. What you have to do is make him do something first. So, Lada has to make Alvarez do something by punching first, by fainting first, by moving first, by changing something, uh, and forcing Alvarez to do something different. Uh, Floyd Mayweather did this perfect with Canelo, right? He was first, not always with the punches, but always with the movement, always with the fainting, and, and Canelo just never got his timing, he never got his rhythm, and he never got into the fight, always because Floyd was constantly first. Uh, he was the first one to make every move. Uh, next, I would say, um, you know, when, when Canelo throws his, his four and five punch combinations, um, you know, uh, Lada has to do something. He can't let him stand in front of him and move his head. He's going to have to punch at him. He's going to have to punch hard. And, and he's going to have to rip that body. Even if he doesn't punch at him or punch hard or rip that body, what he's going to need to do is push him and shove him and start to make uh, Alvarez's aggressiveness work against him. Uh, and then the last thing is, is, and probably the most important thing, is don't spend all night with your back on the ropes. Uh, if you do that with an offensive fighter like this guy is, you're going to have a long, tough, vicious night. Uh, a lot of loves counter punching from the ropes and, and Alvarez is not the guy to do that with. You know, Lada can have a ton of success and I think he can easily outbox Alvarez if he stands his ass in the middle of that ring the entire time. We all know it's not going to happen. We all know that Lada's back will go to the ropes. What does Alvarez do when he gets his back to the ropes? How does he capitalize on it? How does he land the shots that he's looking to land? Um, and, and, you know, as I play all of these things out of my head, uh, I'm edging towards Arislandi Lara by um, a split decision, you know, maybe a majority decision, something close. I was very impressed with, with uh, Alvarez versus Angulo, um, even though I feel like the loss on that was more Angulo than Alvarez. Uh, but, I, man, you know, Lara's going to have to get that respect, man. He's going to have to be first. He's going to have to get that respect. If he does that in the first couple rounds, I think we see that majority of split decision go to Lara. Uh, con you know, basically uh, on the flip side if, if Alvarez doesn't get hit cleanly in the first two or three rounds you know look for him to lose all respect for Lada put his back on ropes and then just bang him out from there uh, but again I got a lot of split decision or majority uh, split or majority decision over uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez and, and I'd definitely like to hear what you guys think about this one. Go ahead and pop some comments below. Let's open up a little discussion, man. But when you do pop comments below, tell me why you think these things. Don't just say this guy's going to dominate that guy. Let's go into a little bit deeper on why you think it's going to happen and why I think that, you know, hey, you might change my decision through, during that whole thing. I haven't put my bets down yet, but uh, I will be shortly. Again, it's the Bowtie Boss here for Fight Combat Sports News.